welcome to LA Editor, Alabama King. Like, subscribe, follow me on this journey. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I am in my backyard right now in Los Angeles filming this. It's sort of mizzling, drizzling, raining, and uh, I just wanted to get this going. So if you hear rain, that's why. If your cars pass by, that's why. If your dog's barking occasionally, that's why. Sorry. If you'll remember on the last video, we talked about sort of the genesis of the farm. What we're gonna talk about on this video is what I did after we planted the trees. So I had a set amount of time to plant my trees. And after I planted the trees, I needed to head back to Los Angeles to get back to work. By the way, this is what it looks like where I live. So, in February, we planted the trees, and in April, my wife Rebecca uh, went down to go visit my dad, and they went to Alabama to check on the farm. And the trees were actually doing pretty good. They were starting to grow branches. They looked pretty healthy. I have bare root trees and potted trees. Even the potted trees looked like they were doing really well. The weeds were starting to grow, not too much. They were, I don't know, a couple of inches. So summer comes and a few things about the farm. I don't have power, I don't have water on the farm. And it was a pretty wet summer in the beginning. Got a lot of rain. Towards the end of the summer, we didn't get very much rain. There was one spell where we went a couple of weeks and we didn't get water. And so I had Brady go and he took his water truck, put a few gallons on each tree, uh, just to make sure that they had something to survive on. My goal uh, was to get these trees to live through the summer. Okay, here's something interesting. I talked to a farmer before I planted the trees and he was like, do not baby your trees. Okay, you don't wanna baby your trees because hurricanes came through and there were these guys who came down here and they had millions of dollars and they planted all these trees and put in millions of dollars of irrigation and they planted those trees and they only grew surface roots and they didn't grow deep tap roots because they were, they were babying those trees and the hurricane came through and those trees toppled over and are now, you know, they're like laying on the ground. So I actually thought that was pretty good advice. <laughs> Um, so that's sort of my strategy with this. I don't want to, um, well, I can't baby the trees. I don't have water. I don't have power. Um, I don't have any sort of water lines installed or irrigation. I just planted them in the ground. My strategy is root, shoot, and then fruit. That's what I'm trying to do. I'm not trying to get these trees to fruit right away. I'm trying to get them to, uh, grow a really deep tap root survive through the summer and then down the road i'm going to dig a trench and put down irrigation and do that sort of stuff irrigation is expensive too by the way so that's one of the reasons why i'm not doing it right away my dad keeps saying ah god just let god take care of it <laughs> like god water the trees actually it's not a bad idea except for the trees to to fruit they have to have lots of water so for the first couple of years um, I don't have to give them tons of water when they start moving into fruiting and pollinating and stuff like that. Then I'm going to really, I need to have that irrigation in place to take care of the trees. So my wife goes down in April and then in August, I was set to go back. Well, I'm sort of monitoring what's going on by talking to Brady, who's in Alabama, just up the street from the farm. And I think it was around June, I started getting a little worried. I was like, how are things going down there? And he was like, well, weeds are growing. <laughs> so uh, around, I think it was July, maybe mid-July, I was like, okay, Brady, let's pull the trigger. If you could mow all the weeds down for me, I would really appreciate it. So he bush hogged all 10 acres down the middles of the rows of trees. And he was like, you know what? I was thinking about uh, bush hogging right around the trees, but I decided not to do that because I was really worried I was gonna hit a couple of your trees and kill them. So he didn't go between the trees, he just went down the rows. And I was just happy the trees were getting some relief. It was July, I was gonna be there in about four weeks in August for a weekend, and I was just glad things were getting done. I, I work, I work full time here in LA. So uh, I had Friday I had to work. So I was gonna fly out Friday night, fly a red eye, 
land in uh, Atlanta, my dad would pick me up around six, seven o'clock in the morning. And then we would drive from Atlanta for about two and a half hours, we'd get a place to stay, and then we start working on the farm. So we have Saturday and Sunday to work on the farm. Fly in, fly out, and then be done. What we didn't know was that we were about to get the biggest surprise of our lives. I had no idea how fast these weeds grow. This is what it looked like when we got there. Look at how, this all used to be ground level. Look, it's like this now. This is insane. There are a lot of people out there that are probably like, why didn't the guy use weed killer? And I actually did use weed killer, but the thing is, I really didn't know what I was doing. First of all, I didn't know that there were different types of weed killer. For instance, there's a weed killer called glyphosate, or a lot of people know it as Roundup. And the way it works is you spray it on weeds that are actively growing at the time. You spray it on their leaves, it soaks into the leaves, and it kills the weeds almost instantly. You can see the effects of it within a few hours. Then there's another type of weed killer, which is called a pre-emergent weed killer. And Prowl, for instance, is a pre-emergent weed killer. The cool thing about a pre-emergent is that I can spray it along the tree line and I don't have to worry about it hurting my trees. It only goes after the seeds of weeds and other plants that haven't germinated yet. So in my ignorance, I purchased Prowl, which is a pre-emergent weed killer. That's what we sprayed and it did absolutely nothing. So what I should have done is I should have sprayed glyphosate down and created what's called a burn strip. You may have seen orchards like this. You can see the dirt strip that runs along the tree trunks. That's a burn strip. The reason you do that is to kill any vegetation that could compete with the pecan tree for water. Once I establish a burn strip, I don't have to spray glyphosate anymore. As long as I spray a pre-emergent along the trunks of my trees regularly, I should be okay. Brady had mowed, he'd mowed down the rows, but the weeds were already starting to come back. You'll see on the row of trees where the trees are, he didn't mow anything there. He didn't mow between them. So the weeds were still right up, really dense up against the trees. He was also worried about sending somebody out there with a weed eater because he didn't want them to get up close and like kill my trees like by hitting them with the weed eater. I needed to do this. I needed to get next to the trees and one by one, we'd eat each one and get the weeds away from it uh, and be responsible for that. I needed to be a farmer. So I wanted to give you a little perspective. Look, okay, this is me. I'm 5'8", and I mean, look at that. We were pretty overwhelmed and we are like, what are we gonna do? We knew we had to start working on it immediately and we had no equipment. So, this is pretty horrible. All right, folks. Let's head back. Go buy some equipment. Tear this up. That's what I'm gonna do. Excuse my language. <laughs> but that's how I feel. That's how upset I am. We drove into town and I ended up buying probably the best purchase that I made so far on the farm and that was a weed eater. I bought a Husqvarna weed eater, which is an awesome weed eater. One thing to know about weed eaters, you've got like, uh, I don't know what you call them. They're like weed eaters you'd buy at like Home Depot and stuff like that. And they're a little different than the ones that are used commercially. So when you have a farm, don't buy it from Home Depot. You should probably look into getting a steel or a Husqvarna because they're just gonna be stronger, more durable. They're made for commercial use. They have larger gearboxes, so you can really put them through the ringer without having to worry about them breaking. Also with the weed eater, I got one of those saw blades because we had some really big weeds. Like some of the weeds were like that big around. And when we got back to the farm, I started working on the row. The weeds grew so fast. And you can see the little paper right there. And then a little farther out, there's another one and it keeps going. There are 21 trees and they're all overgrown. And this makes me so mad. Look, you can see right here where the weed is like wrapping around trying to kill my tree. So I'm gonna come back here and weed eat all of this. Okay, let me stop here for a second and let you know what's going on. You're probably wondering why it doesn't look like anybody did any bush hogging around this row of trees. Well, if you'll remember, I had a row on the very end of my orchard, which I was calling my lone row. And I call it that because it got forgotten. The row's all by itself, and off to the left here, I left space to plant five rows of Lakotas. So from this pollinator row to the other pollinator row, it's 150 feet. 
that's a lot of space. So when Brady came out to bush hog all the weeds, he thought he'd bush hogged around all the rows because this row of pollinators was so small and the weeds were so high, he couldn't even see them. But what's interesting is how well this row did, and I'll talk about that later. Okay, so let me get back to the story. This is the first chance I've had to look at my trees and sort of get a general idea of what I'm dealing with. This one's struggling, but look, I do have a bud. So I hope he lives here. Got another one. This one's hanging in there. But look, look at the size of these things. Look how big these roots are. Like those things are gigantic. So I got to come in with a major weed eater. Here's another one. Ugh, look at those. Look at this vine coming after my tree. I hate that. So frustrating. I'm here, little tree. I'm gonna save you. That's four trees. Here's five. Save this one. Good God. Here's another one. This is six. This one's still alive, but they're struggling. They're struggling. I'm just hoping that they're growing nice, big, deep tap roots instead of working on leaves. Look at these, how big these things are. Look at that. And look, I got these briars here. They're really bad. Let's push this at that one. Good God. All the other trees have been cared for, but because these were spaced, had space between them, nobody knew about them. So when they came out here, look at this. Nice big tree, beautiful tree. And now, it's still green though. Okay. This looks, this one's doing okay. All right, Amling, hang in, hang in there. Okay, so this is the thing that really makes me mad. And it's because I haven't been able to care for them. But look at how it's, this plant is starting to take over. And then these vines get in there. It's like, makes you feel like you're at war. And they're all competing for water, which there's plenty of water. Okay, I got some... Oh, look at that. Freaking gone. Out of here. They are really trying to kill my trees. They do not care. They do not care. Okay, so here's the plan for the day. I'm going to finish walking this row and get a rough idea of how many trees we planted. Then when I'm done with that, I'm going to start weed eating this row. And then I'm going to move on to the next row and I'm going to try to get as many done as I can. Brady's going to be here soon with the tractor and my dad's going to start bush hogging. Hopefully we can get all 10 acres done. That's gonna eat up all our time for Saturday. Then tomorrow on Sunday, I'm gonna try to go through the orchard and assess every single tree and see where they're at. Okay, so some of my trees are doing okay and some aren't. Look at this, how it wraps around this and trying to kill my plant. These things are evil and look, it's right here. You know what? Goodbye. You are dead. You are dead to me. All right, I'm gonna clean this up later, but it is dead now. So it will rot and no longer strangle my tree. All right, I think this is the last one. Looks like it. Brady hasn't gotten here, and so while I was assessing these trees, my dad had already started weed eating. There's Papa O down there doing a little weed eating. Just a little bit. Some of these trees are not doing so well. They're not doing bad. Hopefully they're growing deep roots, but they're really competing and they're being forced to compete with these weeds. So I'm hoping they're getting nice long tap roots. So I'm gonna kill all these weeds around them. Here's my dad.
one of the highlights of this day was when Brady showed up with the tractor. My dad and I are not farmers, right? So my dad and I don't know how to drive tractors. <laughs> I think my dad may have driven a tractor before, but it's been a long, long, long time. One and three to the So Brady taught him how to, you know, run the tractor. And then my dad got going and my dad's 84 years old this year. So the guy's still a practicing attorney, still a trial lawyer, still going to court and he's farming, which is pretty awesome. So my dad starts bush hogging and I get to work on that lone row cleaning up around the trees. Look at that. I am so sweaty. Woo! And this is what I'm up to, trying to save these trees. See, you can see them going down that way. I've got eight more trees to get to, and then I'm done. I think a few of them are gonna die, but most of them are gonna live. They didn't grow very big though, but I think they'll be okay, the majority of them. These are my pollinators. It took me three, four hours to do this one row, and here comes my dad, blip, 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 blip. And look, here's what Papa O's doing. He's doing a great job. And man, he can get a lot more done than me very quickly. I weed whacked this whole area in between, all the way down. And then that took me hours <laughs> to clear. And then when I was all the way down there at like number tree 18, Papa O came by on the tractor, which he's driving up there. And like it took him two or three minutes and he cleared out all that on each side really fast. Oh my God. My dad's job was to basically mow down the middles again of all the trees and then to mow in between the trees so that we could get the weeds down to just around each tree. And then I was just gonna clear like a, a six foot ring around each tree. That was the plan. And that didn't happen. <laughs> We just didn't have time. I had two days. There's no way I'm gonna accomplish that in two days. He ran over a tree, one. He goes, oh, it popped right back up. <laughs> sure. I mean, I don't know. He ran over it with the, the wheel. Apparently the uh, tractor is not easy to steer. And there he is. We busted our butts. Oh my God. We've cleared all of this, just my dad and I. And that was the end of our Saturday. We bush hogged as much as we could. I was exhausted, my dad was exhausted, and we were absolutely filthy. But we did have one clean shirt, and Brady took us to his girlfriend's parents' restaurant in town, and we had an awesome steak dinner. That's Preston's in Laverne. Here's what it looks like on Google Maps, because I didn't take pictures of it. Anyway, if you're in town, check them out, because it's good people, good food, and it's a Laverne favorite. And no, they don't sponsor me. I wish they'd sponsor me, but they don't. Actually, I wish they'd just give me one of their t-shirts. Okay, I'm gonna stop the vlog here and we'll pick back up on the next video where I take a closer look at just how the trees did. Like, subscribe, follow me on this journey.